Welcome back. In our last lecture, we introduced the notion of a cryptographic protocol, talked a little bit about what that was, saw some examples. Let's talk a little bit more about that today. Okay, so to start out with, what's a protocol? Well, a protocol is a structured dialogue. It's just an exchange of messages but among two or more parties that's designed to accomplish something, uh, some communication-related function. And you have to specify for this dialogue uh, the syntax, the semantics, and the uh, synchronization among the parties so they can exchange messages and understand the messages. Well, then what's a cryptographic protocol? Well, it's a protocol that adds cryptographic functionality to accomplish typically some security-related function. And protocols are extremely important in almost everything that happens online. When you send an email or when you move a file or when you do anything, uh, protocols are involved. And cryptographic protocols are also very important. Okay, so what kind of goals might we want to accomplish with a cryptographic protocol? Well, there's a number of them listed here. Uh, they have fancy names like Unicity, but they're really simple things. So the idea uh, for Unicity is that two parties want to establish a shared secret. We saw an example of this earlier in Diffie-Hellman, and that actually was a cryptographic protocol. Uh, integrity. We want to make sure that a message mo arrives unmodified or uncorrupted. Uh, authenticity. We might want to know that a message actually came from, from who we think it came from. Confidentiality. Well, that's pretty clear. Uh, we, want to, we want to send a message in such a way that an eavesdropper who's listening in can't extract the meaning of the message. Uh, and non-repudiation of origin or of receipt means that um, the person that sent it or the person who received it can't say, I, I didn't participate in this. So the sender can't say, I didn't send that, or the receiver can't say, I didn't receive it. Okay, so obviously not all of those uh, all, not all of those goals are appropriate to every protocol, but, but several protocols, or several of them, will be appropriate to any particular protocol. Okay, so all uh, protocols, and all cryptographic protocols in particular, share the following characteristics. Um, there are, are various parties involved in this exchange of messages, and we typically call those the principles of the protocol. And there may be two, or there may be three, or there may be n. We don't know. Um, they're collectively attempting to accomplish some security-related function. And we saw you know, on the previous slide what some of those functions might be. And they're operating in a hostile and insecure environment. And this is very important to understand, because if they weren't operating in a hostile environment, there'd be no reason to go to all this uh, trouble. If they had a secure communication channel between them, then there's no reason to use a lot of this mechanism. But typically what's happening is they're communicating over the internet, which is a very wide open, wild west, insecure environment. And that's where the, the problems come in. Uh, and so the, the hard thing about protocols is designing them in such a way that uh, they operate securely and robustly, even in the face of this ho very hostile environment. Okay. So a protocol then involves, as we said, a structured dialogue, meaning the exchange of messages among two or more parties. And so we typically uh, describe a protocol as a series of steps where one party sends to another party a message. So for example, here we have A sends to B the message M. Now, that happens, but because of the distributed nature of the environment and the hostile nature of the environment, we don't know for sure that B receives the message. So all this, uh, all this step in the protocol is telling us is that A created that message and sent it, but not that B receives it. And in particular, uh, B doesn't know that the message is coming in general. So, uh, for example, think about, you know, you receive a phone call out of the blue. You're not sitting there waiting for that phone call. I mean, you may be in some cases, but in general, you know, the phone rings and you weren't expecting it. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so here's an example of a very simple protocol, right? So A sends to B a certain message. So imagine that they're trying to, that A and B are trying to uh, establish a shared key between them. So A sends to B, or creates a new key, K, session key, uh, signs the key, so you know it's from A, 
encrypts it with B's public key, so it's sent confidentially, sends that message off to B. Okay? Now notice at the end of this step, A knows that it sent the message, but doesn't know that B has received it. And so there's a second step to the protocol in which B uh, extracts K, you know, and it can do that with the appropriate keys, signs the result, and encrypts that result with A's public key, sends the result back. Okay? So, seems to be a pretty good protocol. So what are the assumptions that are being made? Well, first of all, there's the assumption that there's a public key infrastructure in place and that each of them has uh, a reliable version of the other's public key. Well, we talked about what the goals are. Are those goals satisfied? That is, does each party at the end of the day know that the other party has the key and can use it um, and know that, you know, that A is actually talking to B and B is actually talking to A? Well, we'll, we'll come back to that later. Um, but it seems like this is a pretty good protocol, but it turns out that this protocol has a fatal flaw. And I'm not going to tell you what it is right now, but I will uh, a few lectures hence. Okay, so what have we said? Well, protocols are structured dialogues, structured exchanges of messages, and most of what happens online happens via protocols, and so they're very important. Cryptographic protocols use cryptography to accomplish some security-related function, and so they are protocols, but they have this additional layer of security-related stuff. And finally, protocols operate in a hostile environment, and so, uh, in general, you can't assume that a message was received, and you can't assume that there's not parties out there trying to screw things up. And we'll look at that next time. Thank you.